Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is basically uh, an introduction to exception handling. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select menu and Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to Exception Handling Intro. Kaboom, crash, whatever you want to call it. Welcome to the wonderful world of programming. If your program crashes in a blaze of glory, there's a Java term for that special moment. Throwable, as in throwable your computer right out the window. Well, don't really do that, but... The Java Virtual Machine is a workhorse, and it does its job well, but sometimes it just has a bad day and throwables its hands up in the air and calls it quits. And when it does, it lets you know about it. The JVM tells you exactly what happened and why it threw in the towel. Throwable is actually a class in the java.lang package and its purpose is to handle those special kaboom moments. Now what could possibly make the JVM so mad? Now, there are two basic categories for things that really irritate the JVM. Errors and exceptions. Errors. Errors generally happen when things outside of the control of our program occur. They occur because some sort of fundamental problem with the environment the JVM is running in. Things such as malfunctioning hardware, running out of resources, missing class definitions, etc. are common causes of errors. There really isn't much we can do to anticipate errors, so I don't recommend wasting your valuable tr time trying to recover from them. Errors are handled by the error class, which is part of the java.lang package. Exceptions. Exceptions expose the more forgiving side of the JVM. Exceptions sometimes occur when the JVM is instructed to do something stupid. For example, what happens if I instruct the JVM to get, a sub, to get the substring characters 4 through 10 on a string that contains hello? You might think the compiler would catch something like that, but you know, the compiler, when they, you know, it, it does catch quite a bit of stuff, but you know, it's, it's artificial intelligence is basically no match for natural stupidity, but anywho, so, um, suppose that we instruct the JVM to read through a file on a thumb drive when suddenly our super bright user just yanks it out of the USB port. In either case, the JVM will scream out the issue and throw in the towel. Or, maybe we can ask it nicely to explore other options. Well, we can. Java provides us with the necessary tools to allow us to talk to the JVM and resolve any exceptions before throwing in the towel. Exception handling is not an easy concept to master, but once you do, your programs will become robust and reliable. There are five Java keywords that directly relate to exception handling concepts. Try, catch, throw, throws, and throwable. Okay, let's talk about the stack. Just like we needed to understand the memory heap in order to grasp concepts like objects and garbage collection, we need to understand what the stack is before we can fully comprehend exception handling. Now my next tutorial will be dedicated entirely to exploring what stack memory is. I will be making an entire mini-series on exception handling, and in my next tutorial I will go over what the stack is and discuss why it is important to exception handling. Okay, let's come down here and highlight this really simple little bit of code here. Remember, this is just an introduction here, so we don't have a whole lot to go over here. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one by right-clicking, selecting New, Shortcut, type in CMD, Next, and Finish. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open that up, type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command, press Enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java with the MD command. Now, I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder, and I'm going to make one here called um, Exception intro, another directory, change directories to that, notepad exception intro dot java, okay, control v to paste this in or right click and select paste, okay, so here's what I was talking about, string high equals this literal hello, 
string really equals high dot substring four comma eleven. All right, we're just asking for it there. And then check out this this next assignment statement out here, right? Int data types x, y, and z. x is equal to twelve. y is zero. z is zero. Z equals X divided by Y, which will be 12 divided by zero. Both of these are going to cause exceptions. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what happens. Let's clear our screen, type in uh, Java C, and exception intro. Of course, it's going to compile time, uh, just fine, just fine, no problem on that. Where we're gonna hit the errors is when we go to uh, actually run the JVM. So let's go ahead and invoke the exception intro class and right off the bat, boom. Exception in thread main, java.lang, string index out of bounds exception. Okay, I'm gonna go over in great detail what these are here, but they're in the java.lang package. So string index out of range at line 11 over here, right? Um, oh, actually it's talking about this particular 11 which is the second parameter there on that. And I'll get into all that there, but basically at line four of exception intro. Okay, so the exception actually occurred at the sub invoking the substring method there, and then it, um, it went up what's called the call stack to exception intro dot main, and then it was line four that caused the error to run, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, and I'll get into uh, great detail here in future tutorials. I'm just giving you guys a little taste of what's going on here. Now, you'll notice we didn't get our second error because when, our exception, we didn't get that because when this line attempted to execute, it never completed. Basically, uh, program terminated at that point on an error on that. So these two lines never got a chance to execute. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment that line, come up here and save this so we can get our other error there. Let's go ahead and compile that. Now let's try to run it there. Okay. Exception in thread main java.lang.arithmetic exception. And you'll really kind of want to start to pay attention to these things that come after the java.lang. And then we get basically the divide symbol by zero. And then at exception intro, which is the name of our class, and then dot main, which is the main method, and then line seven. Okay. Which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's where our error occurred, or exception occurred right there. All right, um, I am going to go ahead and close out of that and get rid of that and leave you with some final thoughts here. So the throwable class is the top superclass in the hierarchy of crash management. The error class and exception class both extend throwable and thus they are subclasses of throwable. Now, I will not discuss the error class and error handling uh, much, if ever, from here on out. Now, I will discuss exception class and exception handling in great detail. So, uh, stay tuned for my next tutorial on exception handling stack memory introduction. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.